Hi everyone, today I'm going to be colouring in this um, part of this page. This is from the um, weekly um, 2021 weekly planner and uh, obviously we've got this gorgeous little watery magical jungle page to do. Now there's a lot of things that I could show you on this page. Um, I'm not going to do the whole page but I've decided to do this gorgeous little turtle um, there is a lot of water. Now when I did this page in the actual Magical Jungle book, it is a double page spread. The water was very daunting. So what I did was I traced this turtle and some fish and I dotted them about all over the water so there was less water to colour. But um, so that made it a lot easier for me. So I thought I'd share that little tip with you. But today I'm just going to be doing this lovely little turtle. Now. I think he's really cute and gorgeous and I'm thinking about what colours I would do him. Now I like sort of greens on my turtles so that's what I'm going to do for him and I'm going to use my polychromos today. So I'm going to start off with the olive green yellowish and I'm going to do his sort of body. So he's got his little cute tail here and what I'm going to do, I'm doing a sort of medium pressure and just putting down a whole layer of colour. Now one thing I would say, which is a bit rude and a bit crude, so close your ears if you're sensitive, is be way careful with this tail because of its position. I'd just say don't colour it brown because it could look pretty yucky. So uh, keep it to green or um, any other colour. But I don't think brown is necessarily going to look good. Sometimes I think when Johanna draws these pictures, I'm sure she actually thinks about these things and has a little chuckle because there is a fantastic picture in Enchanted Forest where there's a cute little bunny rabbit sitting on some little stones, little round stones. And uh, I have seen a few comments about the fact that, um, well, anyway, if you know about bunnies, and uh, what they leave behind, you'll know why having very round small stones under a bunny is quite funny. But anyway, we shall, um, I digress. So I'm just colouring in this turtle. I'm sorry if I've um, um, offended anyone or put you off your food. I do hope it's given you a giggle. Um, so here he is, just roughly coloured in. Now because of my concerns about green and brown, this is quite a brownish green, so I'm going to try and, I'm going to do some highlights and bits and bobs, but I'm going to make sure I use a green, so it's very definitely green. Um, and I'm just choosing, I'm thinking probably I want quite a dark one, I might go for my pine green. Okay, so this is quite a dark polychromos green and I'm going to start with the tail actually and what I want is it darker underneath because there'll be some shadow there and then against the shell a little bit and actually I've ended up covering up most of the other uh, green there and I think that's what I'll do with this one too. So we're going to put in some darker there you see and then reduce the uh, reduce the pressure on the pencil so that it's a bit lighter as we go up the uh, leg foot I'm not sure if it's a whole leg or just a foot like that can you see so you can see it's darker here and lighter here at the moment it's quite bitty I think it I'm not sure if it's the paper or me but uh, we'll we'll get that sorted but I'm just doing this layer there's this isn't the only layer so uh, again darker down here and then a bit lighter as we go up. So the top of the, uh, I'm sure this is a leg, it's long isn't it? It's not really got very much on at all. Let's see? And with the little cute face. I'm not a big fan of tortoises and turtles but this one is adorable. And the one that Johanna drew for Flourish. I don't know if you've seen that one. That was her free um, download colouring book that she did which was fantastic of her and uh, the one on there was lovely. What I want is something to bring those two colours together. So I'm going to get quite a bright oops, green. This is the permanent green. You can see the colour. Um, I'm showing you the LEDs now I realise and I'm just going to go over the whole thing with this to bring it all together. I realise with some brands of pencil the colour of the LED is not actually a good indicator of how it looks when it's coloured with sort of thing 
and especially um, things like ink tents which once you wet them or any watercolour pencils I would imagine the colours are quite different. So you can see this definitely looks much more greeny. It's still a bit textured but I'm thinking maybe that doesn't matter because um, a turtle's skin, have you seen them? Quite sort of wrinkly and textured anyway. So I think we're okay. And the same with the face. Oh, excuse me, sniffing. It's quite a change doing something different. I've been colouring Worlds of Wonder all week and it's a delight. I've done loads in that book, but it's it's nice to come back to an old friend sometimes, isn't it? Do something a bit different. So there he is. Oh, I think he looks cute. Now we need to do these little roundy bits. Now what I want to do with those is quite an intense burnished green colour. That So there's not going to be shading in it. It's just going to be a dark colour. Now this is the permanent green olive and I think it's going to be quite a good okay, quite a good one to work with the other greens that we've got there. So as you can see, I'm just pressing really hard and... Uh, covering all of the white paper. Now it disappears quite a lot this pattern. If you want it to show up you may need to do a lighter or darker shade of green than this rather than the sort of mid green which is very close to this. And it's up to you and what you could do too is go around the edge where, where Johanna's drawn her marks with a with a sort of grey or black and it would make these pull forward but I'm quite happy with them just looking as they are. Now we've got this shell. Now I think I'm going to go for some browns for the shell um, just so it's different to the green body. Um, I know turtles aren't this colour but you know what's it matter. I'm going to grab a few browns out of my tray. Now I've got um, a problem with my browns being so little it's quite difficult to identify which is which but um, we shall have a try. So this, let me see, that one, one, seven, six, I'm sorry about this, um, what's that one, so little as well, I can't get a hold of them, I've just lost one, look, I'm trying to tell which is which, um, right, this is the raw umber, I'm pretty sure, and uh, I'm going to do a, a layer all over. So you don't need to worry if you don't get quite the right brown. It's just a light brown, which isn't very orangey. Some browns have quite an orange in them, which I quite like, but not for this. I don't think that's the right colour. So you can see I'm just really gently... If you've got a long pencil, if you hold it further away from the end, you get a more light, uh, sort of lighter covering of pencil and um, I'm holding it on its side as well. Obviously I can't hold it higher up because it's too weeny but um, we'll, um, we'll go with it. Now these around the edge, I feel that these are sort of going to be sticking up more than all this lot. I don't know why I think that, so what I want is some shade in here to make these look large, like they're sticking up and I also want to put a little bit here and here, I don't know if this will work, to make it look a bit more like it's not a flat piece. I don't know if that's working but I'm going to try it on all of them and then see if there's something I can do to just... Sometimes with this sort of thing, once you've done a sort of whole area it comes together. I find that with flowers, if you want to sh try and make the petals look like they're bent. If you do one it doesn't always quite work but once you've done the whole flower it can trick the eye then and it all looks better. Sorry I just had to sit up in my chair. Sliding off my chair. I've been quite lazy today. I've been sitting down nearly all morning. Um, although this video goes out first thing in the morning my time I make them all like over the place. It's actually afternoon now. Okay, 
I think that's sort of working. I'm thinking, is it looking like a loaf of bread? Mm. Okay, we'll consider that. <laughs> I'm going to grab the Van Dyke brown, believe me, that's what it is, and go into this gap here all the way around and just try to emphasise that there is a shadow here. Again, it might not quite work to start with and then I'm thinking about what we're doing about the rest of these because these aren't going to be flat either this one's probably going to be sloping up so I'm thinking if I take this shadow slowly up gently fade it up towards the top it might give us the illusion that that is standing up a little bit away from the edge that one might need to take it that way so that the shine is on the top because the light will be coming down from here through the top of the water it's not going to be coming from the side and the same with this one it's quite difficult to get the illusion really there but we'll see keep trying Let's see what happens because I'm you know we could spend hours fiddling around with light and shade and getting it to spot on but I want to keep it simple to get an illusion in a simple way. I know people who would spend hours just on one little section and that's absolutely fine if you want to but for me I'd rather get on with the next one. Okay I'm looking in the camera to see how that looks while I'm wittering on. Okay let's go for a different shade again. This is um, burnt umber and I'm going to now what are we can do with these hmm a similar thing I'm thinking so darker here but not as dark as the other one and then fade up so actually we can see some of the brown that's there already you could do them all the same color um, same shades same pencils uh, you know same browns but with different um, um, pressures so they look different shades but uh, I just fancied a few different colours I put that on too hard so I'm going to grab my rubber um, where is it I use this little Tombow Mono Zero I'm just going to take that back just the tiniest bit There we go. Just just looked to has smoothed it as well, hasn't it? I don't really want it smooth because it's like a shell. I don't think they're really that smooth. Now this one is gonna catch the light on the top, so we're gonna make it a little bit lighter there. Okay, now what the one I've rubbed out looks too pale. Ugh. There we go. Now I'm going to go back on my top bit to the Van Dyke brown that we were using for the bottom and I'm going to use that for these two just because I think it'll be fun. So again darker here then lighten up. remember to leave some light on there. Actually the top one I'm going to go back to our very original colour which was I think the raw umber because we want some of it because this is right the top piece we want some of it to be really pale to maintain that paleness that we had at the beginning. Now there we are now it could emphasize some of the light and shade on this or we could just leave it as it is it's not very smooth but as i say i don't think a turtle shell is really smooth but i think i'm going to grab my dark sepia and just do um a few little bits and bobs so i'm going to go in here and just really emphasize that line can see that that makes a bit of a difference there um, I'm wondering what to do with these lines I think I'm gonna go over these as well 
and these. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we're going to have to do all the rest, I reckon. As it would look a bit weird. So we're just basically darkening Johanna's lines to try and give more of a making them a little bit thicker to give more of an impression of shadow between these little bits. There we go. Oh, he's got such a cute face, hasn't he? Now, oh my gosh, that's a noisy motorcycle going up and down. Now, my last thing is his eye. Now, what I'm going to do with his eye is I'm going to grab a warm grey, um, warm grey four, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of grey on the side there and on the side there, leaving white top and bottom. And what I find that does is it just gives a little bit of life into that static eye. I don't, it works very well for fish as well, but you may not pick up on the camera but if you have a look at yours after you've done it it has to be quite pale not too much and uh, it looks quite cute and uh, as i say a little bit more lifelike now with this turtle once i've colored all this water which i might actually do with a pastel because it'd be a lot quicker i might put some little movement marks around him with some or bubbles with a white gel pen just to make him look a little bit more like he's actually moving and not just static. Um, I will share my completed picture. Um, that will be on Instagram probably. Um, well definitely on Instagram. I don't think I'll put it anywhere else. So um, you'll be able to find it there. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that when you see it. Um, hopefully you'll have fun with this page. Thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.